Remember these guys? <laughs> yeah. How many of us were into opening baseball cards in 2021? Oh boy. Let's take a trip down memory lane. Let's look at some pop counts. Let's look at the entirety of the sports card market. Recap a couple of recent videos I watched on base cards. Stay tuned. Welcome back in ERB sports fans to another video. In this video, I want to talk about the pop counts from the last couple of years and whether or not we've learned anything as a sports card hobby. Now, I was very curious about this because I saw Jeff Wilson has his weekly show where it's sort of like the, you know, kind of four minute snippets of various topics. And this uh, this week's topic, they led off with a discussion about base cards and whether base cards would ever be cool again. And he talked about the grading prices came down and talked about, you know, it's for kids and it doesn't take much for, you know, growth in the hobby. When it comes to base cards, they can be very affordable. Well, I was curious when it comes to Topps Flagship, because, you know, obviously Topps Flagship is a lot of what I open on this channel. It's a lot of what Brett opens on his channel. I was curious what the total number of graded cards were by flagship collection over the last five years. And let me tell you, some of these numbers were absolutely eye-watering. Back in 2020, who could forget the height of the pandemic? There are a total of 196,000 cards, 196,700 cards almost, Graded with PSA's pop count for the Topps Paper flagship. That is really hard to believe. Guys like Luis Robert, Kyle Lewis, Bo Bichette, to name a few. P PSA 10 pop counts almost approaching 20,000 each. Many would say that's way too high. That's, that's just never going to work. Well... We learned a little bit in the last three years, but did we really learn enough? We're going to go ahead and get into some of the numbers here and go through some notable um, things that I learned in looking through some of the PSA pop reports and eBay sales for a lot of these guys. So if we go one year back, 2019, now we know the print run increase year over year here was absolutely staggering between 2019 and 2020. I think we almost saw like a 2x print run increase. I have those numbers somewhere. Go back and watch that video if you haven't when I talked about where future print runs are going. But with Tatis, Pete Alonzo, Vlad Jr. from that 2019 year, you had 106,000 cards graded, which is 53% of the total from 2020. So about half. But you look at the values of some of these cards and you look at like the Tatis base card right now, it's hovering around $25. The Pete Alonzo is about $25. Uh, the Vlad Jr. is about $40. I don't know. They're high pop counts, and those prices don't seem like they'll ever go back up to where they were. And I don't know. I, I mean, at this point, if you pulled that card for $19 a card, would you even grade the card? I mean, I don't even know at this point why the sealed product from the 2020 year or 2020 or get it right, ERB, 2019 year. I don't know why you would continue to price that so high when you're pulling base cards mostly and the value is just not there. $19 a card is not going to entice me to turn in a base card that's worth about two bucks. Probably not. I mean, I've taken chances this year, but most of it has to do with timing. And I've learned a lot of lessons. And this really got me thinking based on my last order with PSA, where, where should I head next in terms of base cards and whatnot? So then fast forward one year. Now, we know PSA shut down right in March of this year, in 2021, I believe. And I think, I think it was 2021. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. I was curious how many of the guys like Ryan Mountcastle, Joe Adele, Christian Pache, Alec Bohm, you guys remember those players from Series 1 that year, they were available in like the late February, early March time frame. And I think a lot of them were sent in. Looking at the pop counts just as a glance for some of those guys in Series 1, they have populations of like two to 5,000 cards each. So of this 45,000 cards, I would guess almost half of it is just like five or six guys. 
Uh, it's probably going to be Joe Adele, Ryan Mountcastle, Christian Pache, Alec Bohm, and maybe one or two others. I mean, maybe we'll call it ten people make up half that total population. And then PSA shut down for almost a year of taking new submissions unless you wanted to pay like eighty dollars to a hundred dollars a card, which was ridiculous. So. Looking at that then, you'd say, oh, 23% of the 2020 total was graded, but the print run increased. So there's a lot of ungraded cards out there. I mean, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure out. Gearby Sports was opening a lot of Series 2 that year. Stacking up the Key Brian Hayes rookie cards. Taking Brett's advice saying, stack them up, stack them up. I probably should have been selling these cards <laughs> the moment I pulled them as fast as I possibly could and i made a mistake so i got like 40 base cards and i've got a bunch of the 63 or 65 insert and a lot of good stuff and key brian hayes is a really good player don't get me wrong i mean i really enjoy watching him play he's a great defensive player and i got some decent stuff here but there's no way in hell i would ever grade this stuff not even close i mean it the value is just not there so then you look at 2022 and that was Wander Franco's year when he was in Series 1. And then you had the debacle in Series 2 where it was just awful. And they had the SPs. And then Update was really good. Great. But only 27,000-ish cards have been graded so far by PSA. And 5,000 of those are just the J-Rod base card from Update. Now, that is staggering when you think about it. That if you look at the entirety of that product... Tops flagship, 26,000 cards graded, and 20% of the 26,000 cards graded is one player's base card. And as of the recording of this video, I believe you can get that base card for anywhere between $25 and $40. So my question is, should that card have a population of 25,000? Because he's, you know, better of a player than like a Kyle Lewis or a Bo Bichette? I doubt it. If that card pushed a population similar to that, I guarantee it wouldn't be worth $25. It would probably be worth $5 because the market right now at $25 supports a population on that card of about twenty, uh, about 5000 So we'll have to see about Wander, but he very well could have ended, ended his career with some very inappropriate behavior if it's all true. The other guys from that, you know, you've got like Torque, Witt. Witt's going to be a great player. Jeremy Pena had a great postseason last year, but didn't really do much this year. you got a couple other guys sprinkled in there. But overall, 2022 from top to bottom between Series 1 and Update was, was pretty solid. Fast forward to 2023, many guys say that this is even deeper than that class. Well, there have been more cards graded, 30, about 34,000. So about 17% of the total so it's gone up a bit, and this number will continue to climb, in my opinion, as we get more, you know, towards the end of this calendar year. We've got update coming out now. We've got the rookie debut cards. People are going to be dumb enough to send in a Corbin Carroll rookie debut in paper, I guess. I don't know how many people, but somebody will. I had to pull it just for uh, the sake of uh, conversation, but... If you look at the paper version of this card from uh, Chrome, this was the Francisco Alvarez Chrome. If you look at the paper version of this, I, I went through and I saw somebody was selling PSA 10 copies of this card. Not, not in the Chrome, but in the paper. I think the pop count right now is 207 cards. And you look at what this is going for. It's going for about like $9 to $15. In a 10, you're losing money guaranteed you're losing money by grading that card. I guess if you're first to market, maybe it pays off. But man, that don't really make you think. Because at this point, I wouldn't be grading any Adley Rushman base cards, any Gunnar Henderson base cards, any Anthony Volpe base cards, and any Corbin Carroll base cards. I don't care. The pop counts will continue to climb for $19 a card. Absolutely not. Even for $15 a card. Absolutely not. I'm not going to take that risk, and I wouldn't recommend anybody take that risk. So what's 2024 going to bring? We've got Ellie De La Cruz coming. We've got Jason Dominguez coming. We're probably going to see an increased print run. We probably will see a similar price point from PSA. So 
I guess to kind of tie this all together, looking back through the last five years, seeing where the peak was in terms of graded cards at almost 200,000 cards from the Topps flagship set, the Topps paper set from 2020, cutting that by a by 75% to 2021, cutting that by almost like one in eight for 2022 and about one in five for 2023. I think you're going to see somewhere around the same ratio. I think you're going to see about 15% of the total from 2021. But if we graded cards at the same rate as we did in 2020 today, guys like Adley Rushman, Gunnar Henderson, Anthony Volpe, Corbin Carroll, their cards would be absolutely worthless. Not that they aren't already, but the Lewis Robert, for example, the PSA 10 copy, you know, that's really small font. The notable values on some of these cards, he's a really good player. Very, very similar to like, um, kind of like, obviously a little bit better power, but you know, his war is similar to like Brian Hayes, right? Lewis Robert, his PSA 10 paper-based rookie is $8. Kyle Lewis, who plays for a team that's, in the World Series right now, his PSA 10, about three bucks. Wander, his PSA 10, now obviously Wander has issues, about $8. Adley Rushman, $30. J-Rod, about $30. Tatis, $25. Carroll, about $30. You get the picture. There's so many cards that are in that $8 to $20 range for the PSA 10 price. There's no way you should be grading that card for $19. There's no way you should grade it for $15. I think the only way that that card is worth grading is if grading hits $6 a card or less. It's maybe worth taking the chance on. But everybody else will have the same idea, and unless the interest at that point is so high, I just don't see that happening. Another way of looking at this, the total number of cards graded in the last three years is only 54% of the total graded in 2020. So when we talk about 10xing the hobby... It just really doesn't seem like we're doing that. Uh, we were, you know, having the hobby, more or less, if that, you know, if that. I think you're probably cutting it by a fifth. There's, I don't know, there's a lot of enjoyment in having cards and, and you know, having collections of your favorite player. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, take Key Brian Hayes, for example. There are 40,000 people that attend every single Pirates game, give or take. If they all wanted a copy of a Key Brian Hayes card, well, his prices would probably reflect that. If I list that card on eBay right now, I guarantee there's not 40,000 people interested in that card. There probably isn't even 40 people interested in that card. In fact, the market is so small for a lot of these guys that a card like this might, by the time it hits three weeks from the time I post it, unless it's an auction, it might hit 40 people, maybe, if that maybe less than 10 people. I mean, that's typically what I see. Cards that I have sold recently that are uber popular, the number of views that I get on cards, I sold a Michael Harris auto the other day. Now, Michael Harris was a very popular rookie. It was an on-card auto numbered out of 199. I listed it for $50 under the last comp. It sat up for a week with 31 followers and about 250 views. There are 40,000 people that attended game, I think it was game four or whatever the last game that the Braves had at home before they got bounced in that series against the Phillies. 40,000 people, but there were only 200 people interested in that card. Now, if there were 40,000 people interested in that card, it probably wouldn't have been an $85 card. It probably would have been an $850 card. But... I don't think you're going to turn every sports fan into a card collector. I don't think you're going to turn an, the casual fan into a card collector. That's a very niche audience. It's always going to be that way. Some people just don't find value in paper. They don't find value in chrome stock. They don't find value in pictures and shininess. They really don't. But there's nothing wrong with that. So looking at the rest of the 2023 class, there's a lot of good guys in here. What's my strategy? I'm not going to grade any base cards. I'm going to wait for them to have a good week. And if I don't want to keep the card, if I'm not collecting the set, I'm just going to sell the card. Put it on auction, put it on a buy it now, try and offer an affordable price and just move on. Move on. 
and have more fun in other ways. So what do you guys think? Where is the pop count headed in the future? Where is the graded pop counts headed in the future? And will base cards ever become popular again? I think for flagship baseball, that's a very, very tough sell. For years like 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, maybe even all the way through 2017, base cards are okay because they didn't make a lot of product back then. Not compared to where we are now. And there's a lot of people that watch NBA basketball, that watch football, that watch baseball, that would love to collect players like Aaron Judge or Steph Curry or Jason Tatum or Victor Wembayama now. I don't know. What do you guys think? Where are we headed from here when it comes to grading cards? I just thought this would be a very fun trip down memory lane, letting you guys know what the pop counts were for Topps flagship paper cards in the last five years. We have definitely learned a lot from 2020, but have we? I don't know. Will we ever go back to that type of insanity? I sure hope not. But thanks again for watching, everybody. Like, subscribe, share, comment down below. I appreciate all your support. 700 subscribers is more than I ever thought I would get to, but we would love to have over 1,000. We would love to have over 10,000 of you. We're just going to keep making videos, keep having fun. Thanks again, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one.